cover a couple of things. For those of you that haven't driven on track before particularly, uh, some of it will be hopefully useful to those that have as well. Um, first thing we're going to look at is our seating position in a car when we're on track. Uh, we uh, tend to be using the controls a little bit more than we do on the road. So when we're road driving, we tend to get set up so we're nice and comfortable. Uh, when we're on track, we want full control over the vehicle. One of the things in particular is the brake pedal. Uh, on the road, you tend not to maybe stop up to the traffic light, um, whereas on track, we're going to be doing 120 miles an hour down the main straight here, and then we're going to be going full brake pressure pretty much up to the point uh, of the ABS coming in. So the pedals are travel quite far because they're pushing it that far down, but also uh, for the speed that we're doing there. Um, so when you get to the track, the guys will set you up in what they feel is a, a good position for you. You're welcome to tweak that so you're comfortable as well as important you're comfortable. Uh, but they will give you a bit of guidance around that. It may be something you're familiar with, uh, it may not. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to try and get you to use a technique that we call fixed input steering. Essentially, we keep our hands in one position on the wheel at about quarter to three, and we don't need to leave the wheel on that point. Uh, when you're on the racetrack, you never need more than about half a turn of block. Um, and by keeping our hands in that one position, we tend to put smoother inputs into the wheel, uh, which makes the car respond better. It's all about being smooth with the car on the track. Um, and also, we just tend to be a bit more accurate in positioning the car. If you're trying to kind of do it with one hand, under the wheel, whatever, New York cab style, it just doesn't work particularly well. So we'll try and get you to do that. It feels a bit weird if you haven't tried it before, but it does work and you get into it quite quickly. So uh, give it a go. Um, if you ever watch uh, motor racing on TV, you will see that the professionals do what we're saying here. They're always very close to the wheel. They look pretty uncomfortable, looks kind of strange. Uh, but again, they're doing it for the same reasons, the control, the leverage over the uh, steering wheel, um, and to be accurate. A couple of differences between driving on track and the highway, for those who haven't done it. Uh, sounds pretty obvious when you get out there. It doesn't always work out that way. I was saying the other day, uh, last week I was in Miami with the lady. And she was driving around, she kept stopping almost on the racetrack, it didn't work out what was going on. I eventually worked out that she was uh, looking for other traffic coming in on the access roads that were coming towards the track. So uh, do not worry, there are roads that kind of join the track, but you are the only people out there. There'll be four or five Bentegas. If you see anything apart from Bentega on the track, you probably do have a problem, but hopefully that will not happen, it will not occur. So let the uh, kind of concentrate on what you're doing and where you're going. Um, our job. As a driver on a racetrack, really is to make it as easy as we can for the car to get around the track. Uh, simplest way to think about that is think of a mountain road or country road at night. If you're driving up it, you can see there's no traffic coming in the other direction. You can see there are no headlights coming. Uh, you tend not to stay in your lane and follow the road all the way up. You can see nothing's coming. You cut the corners. It's more comfortable for everybody in the car. You can go a bit quicker exactly the same principle that we use on a racetrack. Okay? Just trying to smooth the road out effectively as much as we can. It's called the racing line. Uh, you, again, you hear it spoken about on TV uh, with motor racing. Uh, essentially, it's the most efficient line for the car around the track. To make it really easy for everybody, uh, we've combed the track. We have a turning cone, which obviously is the point where you turn in. Uh, we have a clipping point or an apex on the inside of the corner. And then we have an exit cone as you come out. If you join the dots effectively through those three cones, through the corner, everything will feel great. You will know if you're not on the correct line. And even if you don't know why, it just doesn't feel right. You'll feel it doesn't quite feel right. But we'll be there. We've got cones out. We'll be talking you through when you're driving. Uh, so you won't have a problem. It will all work. Um, we're going to do one thing at a time when we're on the track. There are exceptions to it, but essentially, generally, it's the, again, the most efficient way uh, of getting around the circuit. If you think about a tire, it has a finite amount of grip. You can ask that tire grip to do one thing, you can ask it to do 20 things. Uh, if you ask it to do 20 things, it won't do any of them as well as if you ask it to do one at a time. So that's essentially what we're doing. We're going to do our braking in a straight line. We're going to turn into the corner. We'll talk to you about what we want you to do when you turn in to the clipping point. And then from the clipping point on, the track should start to open up in front of you, and we can start to feed the power in. Again, everything we do is very progressive on the track, so we're going to feed the power in nice and progressively and in a controlled way. The reason being 
Uh, road cars are pretty soft and compliant things, as you guys know. Even the most hardcore, you know, like a GT3 RS, is still pretty soft compared to a race car. Uh, it needs to be, because roads are pretty rough and uh, they've got crowns, etc. Uh, so we need that compliance in the car. Here's a picture of a GT V8 under full acceleration. You can see how much weight it's lifting up off the front end of the car. So you imagine if we're in a corner, we're turning the front end, we get to the clipping point, the track's opening up in front of us, we nail the throttle, it's going to lift all that weight off the front end, that weight isn't pushing the tyres into the ground anymore, and you're going to lose grip on the front end earlier than if we manage that weight transfer. So if we're progressive with the throttle, we won't get that big weight lift, a bit more weight will keep the tyres into the ground, and you'll get a better exit from the corner. Same in terms of braking. If we're braking really hard, <laughs> this is a GT V8 under full ABS braking. Um, that actually works very well for the road. Um, but what you don't want to do is then turn into a corner with that kind of thing. Um, so again, we're going to do our braking in a straight line. Then we're going to bleed off the brake pedal. We're going to put some weight back into the rear of the car. And then we will do our corner. The most efficient way of, uh, of the, the way to get the best from the car. We have a thing whereby if we turned into a corner and one of those scenarios happened um, and the back of the car started to come around and you where you get oversteer, or the front of the car pushes, we have ESC, electronic stability control. I'm sure you've all seen it, heard it, played with it. Um, very clever thing, very efficient. Um, everyone is now gonna call it, by the way, as you may or may not know, it's gonna call it ESC from this year on every manufacturer. So before, Porsche called it PSM, ASR, VSC, all this kind of stuff. Everyone, it's a new regulation of the ESC. Uh, so that makes life a little bit easier. So saying at the beginning, ESC will, uh, or sorry, and Bentley's is tuned um, at Nürburgring. That's one of the reasons we go there, a bit of a lot of tuning there. Just to give you a quick feel for how it works, for anyone who hasn't uh, looked into it before, uh, we have understeer control, so where the front wheels aren't gripping on the road. So again, imagine we're coming down, we're going through the corner, we get to the apex, we nail the throttle, take all the weight off the front end, the front of the car is pushing wide, what it will do is it will break the inside rear wheel. By breaking that inside rear wheel, it creates a pivot point and tries to pull the front of the car in. It works quite a lot, even on the road, but you tend not to feel it, it's quite subtle in how it works. What it will do for the opposite of that, for oversteer, we have the car coming down the track, uh, but this time, let's say we turned in with all that weight off the rear, we haven't fled off the brake pedal properly, the rear of the car tries to rotate, now it will break the front outside wheel to the corner. So right hand corner, it will break the front left hand wheel, and by doing that, it will pop the car back into a straight line. Okay? Quite aggressive in how it works, and you may well feel that today, especially in Bentayga a little bit more of a uh, high sense of gravity when you're out there, maybe when Derek's driving, uh, you will feel that. <laughs> not only flying <laughs> um, And yeah, quite aggressive. It'll kind of grab it, and then the car pops back into a straight line. Easiest way to think about it, think of a tank. How do you steer a tank? It doesn't have wheels on the front of the turn. You break one track, tank turns. Essentially, that is what we're doing with VSC. Very efficient. Um, quite a cool thing. That is it for me. You'll be glad to hear we're going to get you out driving. Uh, if you feel ill, really, you can call them one from here at any point, uh, let us know and we will get you out of the car, we'll get you feeling better and we'll put you back in. Do not try and ride it out, it does not get better and then you have to drive home feeling pretty rough. So I wish we would hate of course. Um, so uh, let us know and we'll get you out. Good, okay.